was in the Miller's Drum mm -hmm. Corps, so we went all over for parades. Ah, uh, I was about 10 when they started. Mm -hmm. Every night of the week, marching or practicing or... Actually, it was my aunt and uncle that were in charge of it. And he was a musician. They didn't have any children. And a couple of people approached them because they knew he played. You talk to anybody that was in the drum corps, I mean, that was their life. You see many married couples now that met in the drum corps and are still married. Every Memorial Day, it was in the morning in Cerebral and the afternoon in South Amboy. And no, we hung out with the drum corps. Even in, you know, even in high school, it was basically, our activity was the drum corps. It, if we had a marching practice, it was once, once a week they had the marching practice, but every day was a different section. So you'd still go up there and meet other friends and socialize. That was, that was your strictly your whole, basically your whole social life then. Melrose was isolated, like I said, from Cerro because it was too hard to get around. If we had to go any place in Cerro, we had to go to South Amboy on one bus and then take another bus to get up to Cerro. So we yeah. didn't do it very often. We were, even, even when I was in high school, we were kind of isolated, both Morgan and Melrose, because it was too hard to get to Cerro and the transportation was almost impossible, so that we were kind of pushed away. I started in Roosevelt and then went to Washington. My main memory of the thing was we had to take our own lunch and we had to sit on a wooden bench with our back against the wall and eat our lunch every day. And that made me decide that when I got married and had children, they were going to go to a school where they came home for lunch. I didn't want them sitting like that. We used to walk down the basement yeah. and sit there. It was nicer in the Washington school because we weren't as much in the basement as we were in the Roosevelt school. But, um, oh, I, I can remember the... And I tell my kids, and they laugh about it, that in the Washington school, we had a dentist office. There was a dental chair. We had our teeth checked every year. Mm -hmm. uh, then there was a doctor came in, and they checked your eyes every year. And Miss Lehman, if you were sick, Miss Lehman took you in her car and took you home. None of this call on your parents, because most of your parents didn't drive anyway. But that was one of the things we always felt, Melrose always felt. We were pushed. You know, like, I remember my fourth grade, I went three days to school, in Roosevelt School. And the next day, I just got on the bus, and the next, it took me to Washington School. Just like that. We were the ones that, you know, if they felt the school was overcrowded or something, Melrose was always the ones shoved around. We felt like the outcast. <laughs> I mean, the kids from Melrose, if they went to a Catholic school, they went to South Amboy Catholic School, not Sarah. If the churches, we went to South Amboy churches, not Sarah. Because it was just easier to get to. I, they had to knock down houses, right a house right across the street from my our house. They had to knock down the egg farm that I told you about and to put the parkway and the parkway bridges in. And they took down all of our woods because my house overlooked the toll gate. And it used to be how we got to the woods. Well, then they cleared out our Huckleberry Woods, <laughs> took that all away. Oh, I think the people there just accepted that's what was, they were going to do, and they did it. My husband was in the service. We were stationed in California for a year, and then 
Florida for two and a half years. I think the biggest change I noticed was the difference in teaching, because I taught at Sarah High for four years, left, and then went back to teaching. That's where I saw the difference. I was on the session for half-day sessions when I first taught. You went to school, you got went into a classroom at, I think it was 7 o'clock, and you worked at 12. No break. Nothing. Six straight classes. Then the afternoon session came in at 12 and worked till 5. And again, you went to a classroom at 12 and you stayed in there till 5. Because it was during that time when they built President Park. Mm -hmm. And a lot of developments. Uh, people started moving down because once the parkway came in, it was accessible. And we, that's when they started calling it the bedroom community because people could live in Cerebro and commute just about any place. Mm. So there were a lot more children. It was crowded then. I left in 62 and the new high school opened in 62. I graduated in 54. Mm -hmm. We were the first class that had 100 mm -hmm. students. And I guess the four years that I was in college is when we started to see the increase. Mm -hmm. So it was during that four-year period. So that when I started teaching in 58, it was double session. Mm -hmm. So from that four-year period, I would say, was when the influx came into Cerebro.